Jesus healed a blind man on the Sabbath and through it revealed that the Pharisees were the ones who were blind. They said Jesus was not from God, even called Jesus a sinner. But Jesus told these religious leaders the stark truth. They were the ones who were in sin. Jesus continues with them here. Let's dig in. I'm in chapter 10, verse 1, reading from the New American Standard Version. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter by the door into the fold of the sheep, but climbs up some other way, he is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. A stranger they simply will not follow, but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus spoke to them, but they did not understand what those things were which he had been saying to them. Jesus is talking still to the Pharisees, and he's using a figure of speech which they don't understand. And we're not surprised because even when he speaks plainly, they don't understand. He told them in chapter 8 that they cannot hear his word because they are of their father, the devil. So Jesus tells of sheep who are in a sheepfold and there is one who doesn't enter by the door. He climbs up some other way to get in. Jesus calls this one a thief and a robber. And he's talking to the Pharisees, the so-called religious leaders, the ones who are the thieves and the robbers. God is very serious about the care of his sheep. In Ezekiel 34, he spoke against the shepherds of Israel who were feeding themselves rather than the flock. God said, I will feed my flock and I will lead them to rest. I will seek the lost, bring back the scattered, bind up the broken and strengthen the sick. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with judgment. Here, the Pharisees, self-appointed shepherds, are leading the people astray as they come against Jesus. Jesus is saying they don't even belong in the sheepfold. They are usurpers who had to find an unauthorized way to get in. But the one who enters by the door is the shepherd, the one who knows the sheep, and the sheep know his voice. Continuing verse 7. So Jesus said to them again, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is Jesus' third I am statement. I am the door. He's the only way in. As he says later, he is the way. The way to what? The door to what? Salvation and peace. Look at the comfort in these words. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. It brings to mind Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. This is comfort as well. Verse 8, all who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Not only do the sheep hear Jesus' voice, 
they don't hear the false shepherds. And we saw this in chapter 9. The Pharisees told the blind man who'd been healed that Jesus was a sinner. The man told them, God doesn't hear sinners. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. That man could not hear the Pharisees, the thieves and robbers in Jesus' parable. Jesus makes a sharp distinction between him and the thief. The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. He came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And what have the Pharisees been doing as Jesus calls people to eternal life? They are plotting to seize him and silence him. They are of their father, the devil, the one who was a murderer from the beginning. We know the enemy is the one who is behind every attack of Jesus. The enemy knows who Jesus is. He hates his offer of eternal life. Continuing verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who is not the owner of the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and is not concerned about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my own, and my own know me. Even as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will hear my voice, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it again. No one has taken it away from me, but I lay it down on my own initiative. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This commandment I received from my Father. We have the fourth I am statement. I am the good shepherd. And what's the first thing Jesus says of himself as the good shepherd? He lays down his life for the sheep. What a contrast. The thief comes to kill. The good shepherd not only gives life, he lays down his own life for the sheep. Jesus says it five times in this section. He lays down his life. Speaking of the crucifixion to come, he makes his sovereignty clear in this. No one has taken it away from me. I lay it down on my own initiative. And don't get confused. He will take it up again. Death will not have the final say. Jesus tells something else that is to come when he says, I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will hear my voice and they will become one flock with one shepherd. And we Gentiles, non-Jewish people who have believed in Jesus unto salvation, we say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for counting us among your sheep, for giving us ears to hear your voice, for knowing us and giving us hearts to know you. Thank you, Jesus, for laying down your life for us and taking it up again. Continuing verse 19. A division occurred again among the Jews because of these words. Many of them were saying, He has a demon and is insane. Why do you listen to him? Others were saying, These are not the sayings of one demon possessed. A demon cannot open the eyes of the blind, can he? We see this refrain throughout, a division among the Jews. Either Jesus' claims are true, or he's an insane demoniac. But it's not just his claims. His works are testifying for him. That's why people are saying, a demon cannot open the eyes of the blind, can he? It's amazing the two extremes, but not surprising. This is spiritual. 
This is life and death, heaven and hell. Jesus, eternal God, actually put on flesh and came to set people free. Every demon is on deck to steer people away from Jesus. And what better deception than to make people think Jesus is one of them. Continuing verse 22. At that time, the feast of the dedication took place at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. The Jews then gathered around him and were saying to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name, these testify of me. But you do not believe because you are not of my sheep. Jesus has said so much about who he is and who his father is. So much that makes him unmistakably the Christ, that he is not moved to say more. He simply says, I've told you, you don't believe either me or the works. And let me tell you why, because you are not of my sheep. Then he takes the opportunity to share truths related to those who are his sheep. Continuing verse 27. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give eternal life to them and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all and no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. I and the father are one. This is mind-blowing truth. These are assurances Jesus didn't have to give in this moment, but he wanted his sheep to know. He wanted us to know. We will return to this, but this last line, I and the Father are one. They said, tell us plainly if you are the Christ. He just did. And look how they react. Continuing verse 31. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I showed you many good works from the Father. For which of them are you stoning me? The Jews answered him, For a good work we do not stone you, but for blasphemy, and because you, being a man, make yourself out to be God. Jesus answered them, Has it not been written in your law? I said, you are gods. If he called them gods to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the son of God. If I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. But if I do them, though you do not believe me, believe the works so that you may know and understand that the Father is in me and I in the Father. Therefore, they were seeking again to seize him, and he eluded their grasp. They said, tell us plainly if you are the Christ. But because of unbelief, they can't receive it. They're ready to stone him, accusing him of blasphemy because he's making himself out to be God. But you asked. Jesus tries to reason with them, again confirming who he is by calling himself the son of God. But their minds are bent on seizing him. Imagine time and again a mob of people trying to seize him and he just eludes their grasp. Because he's God and it's not his time. Continuing verse 40. And he went away again beyond the Jordan to the place where John was first baptizing and he was staying there. Many came to him and were saying, while John performed no sign, yet everything John said about this man was true. Many believed in him there. Glimpses of grace. How beautiful is this? 
The chapter ends with a demonstration of what Jesus was saying. These people were Jesus' sheep. They heard his voice and followed him. They believed. And you know we're going back to verses 27 through 29. Listen to these definitive statements. These are absolutes, promises from God himself. Let's list them one by one. My sheep hear my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give eternal life to them. They will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. And in case there's some doubt about that last part, Jesus shores it up. Listen, my Father who gave them to me is greater than all. No one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. Just making sure you heard Jesus say, no one. So if you're a believer, you are firm in the grip of Jesus' hand and firm in the grip of the Father's hand. Guess what? God is clinging to you more than you're clinging to Him. He's got you. It's not about how good you are or how well you follow. You can't even snatch yourself out of God's hand. Believe this promise. Rest in this promise. Enjoy this promise. Enjoy the assurance that you will cling to our loving Father forever.